So when you're looking to get out and do a little camping, whether you're overlanding or just staying at a state park, you're in a class A RV, or you're in a small teardrop, one thing that's premium is having a good outdoor space to be able to sit back and relax bug free and dry. In today's video, we take a look at the Gazelle G6 Deluxe six-sided portable awning. This is your first look at the Gazelle Gazebo. Hey guys, it's Matt and Wendy DeWitt. We're back with another video. Today we're talking about the Gazelle six-sided deluxe awning. Yep, I said deluxe because Gazelle's done it once again, listened to their customer base, and taken the standard G6 six-sided portable awning and brought it to the next level, forming the deluxe. What's so deluxe about it? Well, let's get into it. So in this video, we're going to do a lot of comparisons between the standard model and the deluxe model. First off, one thing we noticed between the model we had just a couple years ago, the standard one, and this new deluxe one, is the upgraded pads to the arm strap. Definitely thicker, more plush, a um, little bit easier to carry. And we noticed the bag with those awesome YKK zippers that they have on there. It just makes it a uh, premium experience trying to get the actual awning out of the bag. The bag is definitely a little bit bigger, maybe a little bit more oversized. So it definitely makes it easier for packability and trying to pack it down when you're trying to get a big wet monster back into the bag after a long rainy weekend. Kind of like what we had on our fall trip as of recent. You can see here Gazelle has the instructions full setup for setting up the Gazelle awning. They are sewn into the bag so you can never lose them, which is an awesome touch. You have these giant wide uh, handles and once you get it out of the bag, there's some straps that go around the actual awning itself and that kind of holds it in place. So you undo those straps and you hold it up and we just sped it up there for you. But it basically, you just pop out the sides. It's a standard six sided awning. If you have never seen that before, you grab onto the pull grommets, you pull out each side panel it expands in a matter of seconds. I think we had Wendy down to about 40, 45 seconds setting it up by herself, which was no problem. So once you get it set up, all you need to do is kind of reposition it, have your door in the direction you want, towards your camp, towards your house, whichever, and then you stake it down to the ground. So we got a chance to go up and do a little fall color touring, and it happened to be that forecast for that weekend was rain all weekend. We had on and off rain showers the whole time, so we basically knew we needed to have a good area that we could stay warm and stay dry. So with air temperatures in the 40s, windy and rainy, this made a great changing room. It was awesome to be able to just pop in there and quick change your clothes. We had complete privacy with the zipper down walls and we just left the awning door down to kind of keep the heat in. The room inside for a full size picnic table. Put your portable campfire and a set of chairs with a table, no problem. So once you pop out all six walls and you've got your gazebo arranged the way you want, you can throw your picnic table in there. And this is a full size picnic table. I'm telling you guys, plenty of room, plus we had two chairs in there. So Wendy's gonna demonstrate setting up the accessory poles to kind of give the door entrance area a little bit of structure. So the door is framed with three accessory poles. You've got one pole on each side, plus one pole that goes across the top. Just put it in the pocket, bend it a little bit for the top pocket and a little piece of Velcro, and you've got the door framed out. So to give it some extra support on the doorway, they give you another pole to put in a pocket on this end. And then again, there's another pocket across the way. And then to keep it supported, they have a Velcro strap in the middle. Which gives the whole doorway an extra support so it's not sagging on you while you're going in and out of it. So once you pop all your walls and you get the straps through all the grommets, then you want to secure your rain windows if needed and feather out your skirt so that you don't get any water inside. So you find this piece of um, rope. It's got a ball on there which helps make it go through the grommet easier. And just do that. And then you pull the grommet so it goes over this eye loop that they have. So if you're not going to have the window open and you want to keep it closed and secured, you can take this hook and put it around the threaded part of the eye hook. So what will happen if you don't zip up the sides, the window will kind of go through it and these sides are kind of blowing out back and forth. So Wendy's going to demonstrate. 
Got some nice zippers provided on the inside, which work really well for all the panels. They zip down versus our old setup was the Velcro tabs. So it's a little more of a tight seal, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely seals up a little tighter. And each panel has its included straps that hang off it. So you can easily roll up a side panel if you need to. So in this bag, <clears throat> you've got your upgraded stakes. You can see a pretty aggressive tread here. They list their customers from the last generation and they've updated the stakes. Um, these are pretty easy to get in the ground and they can be twisted in or just pushed in, hammered in. So really nice stakes. They do include some guide ropes. You can tie things down. Plenty of those, plenty of stakes to stake it down all the way. Even include these little rubber tips to protect. So you got your grommet hole. We're in kind of a dirt material, so I can literally push these in. <laughs> I might need a hammer a little bit, but a little twist. So I just tied a simple bowling knot around the eyelet. You could probably go off the handle if you wanted, but more secure with the metal. So tied it around here and then I'm gonna run my stake down. Then it's got these simple lock louvers and I can adjust my tension. One thing that you can also do is make sure you never forget, use what's around you. Um, got this nice tree here. <laughs> and why not just use the rope tied to the tree? Makes it a lot easier. So same thing, just ran the rope through itself. And then just ran it here and tied a simple knot. So this is another way you can use a very good anchor. There's no way this thing's flying away. So on the inside, you can see we've got plenty of room. This is probably, how big of a table do you think this is? Uh, six foot. Yeah, probably six foot table. We got room for a couple of chairs that we're gonna put over on this side, maybe one on each side. And then we've got a six foot table in here. And uh, because we're on power, I don't have to burn propane. And I just got a little electric space heater, so. This is a 1500 watt space heater. And we'll get this thing cranking. I'm not burning propane, not wasting anything. I'm already paying for the power with a lot, so we should be toasty in here if we so desire to turn it on. Right now, the air temperature is what? I think around 40? Something along that line. Yeah. It was and you're the, wearing shorts? It was in the 30s overnight. Come on, we're in Michigan. <laughs> so you're saying it's warm now? Yeah. Another cool thing we did with the added door, since we're not gonna be utilizing it, is we just cracked the door open just a little bit, and that was a perfect place to run our extension cord. Um, you can run it through the extra door, or you could actually run it under the tent itself, either way. But just feeding our little space heater. So one cool thing that I saw upgrade from the older model is these little covers. Um, has a little nut that comes through there. And this just kind of protects it, make sure nothing hits it, scrapes it, that kind of thing. You got the zippers that you can access from the outside or the inside, so that makes it super easy to quickly ventilate from either direction. So here's the awning poles. One just goes inside the other one. And then they got the nice little snap buttons. So, very nice poles. They're pretty heavy duty. Good construction. I like how heavy they are. Should hold up real well. So on our trip, we had our awning too close to the gazelle awning room, so we couldn't demonstrate how the poles had set up in awning mode. As you can see here, when we got it home and had to air dry it because of all the heavy rain we had, um, we got the poles up, and you can put a couple of ropes to each side to properly guide it out. That way it won't blow away. It's absolutely toasty in here, so... I will not need this hat, and uh, we're gonna enjoy our breakfast. If this was an off-grid camping trip, then I would replace the electric heater with a buddy heater. So, same concept, you just gotta make sure you bring enough <clears throat> of the green cans or 
a, uh, enough propane. Oh boy, I don't know if you can hear it, but it is downpouring out there. It is Saturday night. Last night in Petoskey State Park, and we're having a good time playing some cards. I'm getting my butt kicked again. We are staying dry in the Gazelle Gazebo. I don't know what we do without it this weekend because it's been just nonstop rain all day today. So on our second night camping, Wendy curled up with a nice good book. One thing we noticed is our hardcore lights work perfect on those crossbars. We can mount those, put them just behind her so she can read, and I got a little bit of work done while we were on the trip. Worked perfect. So after three days of pretty much downpours, almost nonstop, we did notice at the seams, at the thread count, there was some small drips or leaks coming in. This was very minor it was not an issue it did not get on our picnic table this was all in the outer seams but you got to remember this is three days this is extreme rain we're talking here we noticed that some of the seams around the area where the poles attach also had some leakage and seepage could that be remedied with some seam sealant i'm sure it could so on the third night we took a look and saw a lot of wet drops and we discovered that what we had was a lot of condensation going on. We had the heater crank so high in there and it was so toasty warm. It was condensating with how cold it was outside. So we wiped that off and our theory was right. Although water stopped. So if I were to give the Gazelle Gazebo any kind of con, and you really can't do anything about this, it would be having to put it away wet. It literally rained all weekend long and you just take out the three poles that are in the door, you pull down the roof, you pop in all your sides, and you roll it up. And then somebody gets the dirty chore of holding that dirty monster while you try to get that strap around it and then feed it back in the bag. Let's compare the standard G6 to the G6 Deluxe. What are some of the major upgrades? Well, there's four in particular that I think stand out. One is the added zipper screens, so you can add ventilation. In the hot summer months, we notice these screen rooms can get really hot, so I really appreciate the zippered screen uh, windows. You also have zippered walls that are attached all the time versus the Velcro walls of the standard awning. You've got the front porch with awning poles. That's a nice touch and a nice upgrade. And you also have two doors. So you can access from the front or the back to get into the screen room. Those are all nice features and nice upgrades from the standard G6. So if you currently own the G6, is it worth going to the Deluxe? Well, if those added features are definitely worth it to you, I would say yes, absolutely. It's definitely worth the extra money. To me, I would skip the G6 and go right to the Deluxe. Uh, it's got all the added features and there's nothing to worry about as far as leaving your walls behind, and those extras gives you a little bit of extra space to having that awning off the front thing is completely bomb proof we love the quality of the materials like i said it rained all weekend and we had no issues with water penetration so we absolutely think the g6 deluxe six-sided portable awning from gazelle is totally worth your money thanks for watching guys and no matter what equipment you have for camping make sure you guys get out and do a little camping